and welcome to the video and this is going to be a new weekly series releasing every single Wednesday where I bring you up to speed on everything that's happened around the world of Rainbow Six Siege Esports in the aim for the teams to qualify for the Manchester Major. So every Wednesday I will be wrapping up everything that's happened around the world because boy there is a lot of siege happening over the next two months. Just to give you some sort of idea about everything that's happening over the next month and a bit, the wonderful Spur Bunny, and I will link this tweet in the description as well, has broken it down for us about all the leagues that are happening. So we have South Korea, North America, Japan, Brazil, EUL, LATAM, Asia, and that is all the leagues that will be happening and I will be bringing you up to speed on all of them every single Wednesday. So to start us off, we have EUL Play Day 1 where there were some shock results. The New Look Secret beat the new T1 side of Ents convincingly 7-2 with the MVP of that game being Adrian, the new pickup, surprisingly playing hard support. He went 11-4 and, and he had some incredible plays inside of that game, the first of which was this amazing play by Osa in which he pushed down main stairs on Clubhouse, saw the space, took it and clutched up as well. And I'll show you a little clip from that game. Just to let you know, I will be watch playing all the EUL games and all the NAL games and try and squeeze in some of the other leagues as well. So if you want to come and watch them live with me, you can come watch them on the Twitch channel in the watch parties as well. But here's the clip. He's just going to be using that little bit of... Adrian! Oh, what a beautiful... Adrian! Adrian! That's a double for Adrian. Can he make it a King double? King shit! Where the last one is. Going to try and hold him off. But then to him versus Nako. Oh, and at this point, nako has got no impacts to make use of either as well. This shield stays put. Well played, Adrian. With only 10 seconds to go, he's got to get a kill right Adrian! Adrian! Come on, brother! It's safe to say, if you didn't know, uh, I know Adrian before he made it to T1. Um, and he was also in my Jesse J Chicks fantasy Rainbow Six team. And he got a fuck ton of points, which was amazing. The other game we had was I am a content creator for ITB. ITB play Wolves. They were 5-1 down at the split on Consulate and then had a flawless defensive half to go on and win 7-5. And there's a little clip here from um, Charlie with a fantastic 3K, otherwise known as Creed's. And also my reaction to ITB pulling off that comeback. A little bit loose to it fucking was yes, just does. the patience, Please the coolness the from Charlie no is too there, strong. Though. The drone game, maybe not quite up to snuff here for Wall so far. Yeah, Creed's played that super cool there. He knew the drone had missed him, kept himself in position, and, and it was a matter of time. He's got himself. Oh my god, dodge. Creed! Creed! Oh, no. <laughs> Creed! Oh, holy shit! Yes! Oh, the two versus five, surely! Yes! Come on! From five one down, baby! Six straight rounds! The boys get it done! The next game we had was an absolute rip roarer, a barn burner. And as Ace would say, we're going all the way, Daz, because it went all the way to overtime and max OT of round 15, with G2 just coming out on top 8-7. I've got a little clip from one of the rounds, the ending of one of the rounds, where it just goes to show that this game, if you haven't watched it, it's worth watching back because it was sheer, sheer chaos. And here's a little round um, where Jigsaw pops off with a deagle and Fnatic win one of those rounds. And it was just pure chaos. That's mistakes into a two kill three versus three. However, it's a three versus three. Where's Piggy T? Piggy T falls. Oh my God, that flick. flick. It's Uno chaos, man. And Virtue once again is left in a 1BX. Oh my God, Jig with a double D, baby. What is going on? As you can see there, pure chaos. I didn't have a clue what was going on, but Fnatic came out on top in that round. And our final fixture from play day one was the ever impressive BDS showing why they may be this new super team coming out very convincing victors 
up against Wild. With new boy users popping off in a big way. And to be honest, everyone on the team popping off. And it's no less than we would expect. And now we'll take a quick look at Play Day 2. So Play Day 2 started with an absolute rip roarer. And Ents came out victors against Wild 8-6. In which was a bloody unreal game. And the games just kept getting better and better and better. We saw Virtus Pro against Wolves. Wolves had the 5-1 split on the defense. VP then gave them a 5-1 split, which took us to overtime with no one winning an attacking. Well, there were two attacking rounds won throughout the whole game as it goes into round 15 with Wolves left to attack to try and win their second attack of the game. And they were two against four with 20 seconds left on the clock. And I mean, you can see the result there, but this is how it played out. Four finds the shoulder and the shimmy shake onto always a two versus two. Out of nowhere and nothing, the plant is being attempted to step in via the... They're going to get the plant. Oh my God, no way! The post plant and absolutely nothing. Wolves have somehow pulled this back from the brink. He's between a rock and a French... They win! Oh my... God, I've jinxed it to the highest degree. Um, the reason I spoke about a little bit of jinxing to the highest degree there was because just before that start of the clip, there was 20 seconds left on the clock, two Wolves players, four VP players. And I said, there's no team like VP who would throw away this sort of advantage. And that is why R6 Esports is so fantastic, ladies and gents. I don't think anyone who follows R6 Esports would think Virtus Pro would throw away a four versus two with 20 seconds left on the clock. But they did. And Wolves ended up getting their first points of the season. Um, and then we saw BDS up against G2. And BDS just continued to look so, so good. Managing to beat G2 again, it's proved that it wasn't a fluke out in Malta where they beat them 3-1 in the best of five grand final in the Malta Cyber Series, the off-season tournament. With BDS playing two, winning two, 7-4 and 7-2. Our final game of the day was Fnatic up against ITB. Unfortunately for ITB and me, there were no huge celebrations because Fnatic continued to impress. Let's not forget in play day one, they managed to get one point off of G2 when it went right down to the wire. But then they managed to pick up three solid points against ITB. And now we'll take a quick look at the table to round everything up for you. So as you can see here, we have our table with BDS going 100%. They find themselves on six points, play two, having one, two. Mixed results for everyone else. Um, the only team that only played one game was Virtus Pro. So all the other teams have either lost a game and won a game or lost both games. Um, and that's going to put BDS already clear top of the table. And I have to say, I, I was in Jesse J Chick's chat and I said, if BDS don't win a major or SI this year, then I'll chop off my toe. And I have to say, I still am sticking true to that statement. But we'll now have a look at the results over in the NAL League. So now was the test of this new look M80 side. They went up against the wildcard roster, who a lot of people had high hopes for, but they were the same team that played for Mirage last season. Obviously, some things have happened to Mirage, which we will look at at the end of the NAL section. But this new look M80 side looked very, very impressive. The EU massive, and I have to say, obviously I'm a big EU supporter, but any team that has three EU players in it, I'm going to say is going to do well in EUL. And that's exactly what happened for this new M80 side. They managed to secure a very convincing 7-4 victory over on Chalet. Our next result was also a new look side. Pretty much all these teams have changed inside of NAL. And we had Gomez and Diaz and Yago going back to Oxygen, joining Dream and Nua's. And they were going up against the new look team inside of NAL don't scratch your eyes that is lost the former Brazilian side that made the grand final in Atlanta and um, none of those players remain on that side anymore it's a new look loss roster and I have to say they looked a little bit lacking as Oxygen easily breezily blew them away on Oregon our third result of the day may have been the biggest shock in my eyes um, I thought Dark Zero were after sort of um well after SI probably looked like the strongest team in NAL. 
and they hadn't made any changes. Whereas Sonics, they had lost Citizen to M80 and Grixa had been put on the bench with two new players coming in and the Sonics, they looked fantastic. Coming out 7-2 victors on Clubhouse against DZ with what I assume a lot of you have seen this clip. In the winning round, there was a little bit of a misplay from Bolo. I think a lot of people initially thought that Bolo had accidentally dropped the hatch. But in my eyes, we watched the clip back and I think he was on such lower HP and so scared of the clash shocking him to death. He wanted to play the vertical below with the shotgun and it was obviously just a little bit of a misplay and not maybe aware of how much time was left on the clock. But I'll show you the clip now and you can make your own mind up on it to be on red last one more than likely has to be over on the con side but now it's just up to geo well there's a couple shots away and pamba having a beautiful cross here oh this might be all she wrote no way to clean those up but on such little time all bo has to do is just play things out appropriately here Wait, what he's underneath Wait. This oh my god bolo no. no no bo no no this gracious <laughs> this is the most insane finish to a game in the nal that we have had in a very and i'll finish it for stokes there in a very very long time um we see your main man there um geo clutching up in the most impressive of fashions in a one versus three sort of one versus two effectively with the player downed um just clutching it up to give sonics a fantastic win and cement them at top of the league our next game and our final game of that day was ssg up against luminosity um, and SSG, I have to say, they just continue to look impressive. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if SSG are challenging for that top spot in NAL. We've seen them get through to all of the majors and perform decently at them. But I wonder if this is a year that SSG can go a little bit bigger. I have a couple of clips um, from the game. One insane play. And then also a fantastic Valk cam, which went hugely unspotted by luminosity position One he's, miles, he's like coming outside they got 20 seconds another, I think, c4 in the pocket of eddie as well he's got 18 seconds left and ssg are still getting into position toss that c4 Swim out early toss the c4 out find the right angles cuts down forest the flash doesn't even blind him he's able to switch over to jim oh he's gonna pop that shotgun, iconic falls to a no j90 how so clutch in the end of how the does he win that Rings around back from SSG. That's C already setting up angles for main stairs. This is beautiful. I mean, if, if you're the coach of LG right now, you got a tear in your eye. Except for that. Just I'm taking crazy. my mother. I'm right. staring you in the face. There's a well, mole, and it's staring me in the face. I don't see the black guy. It can't be perfect. We're not it supposed can't. to talk about. Look, it's perfect. right there. Look, you can see it. it. Look, it's still there. Am I also blind? No, it's it's on the sign. I see it. I see it with my eyes. Well, unfortunately, he doesn't. So he'll just have to sit. Um, so maybe a uh, valve cam that you might be using in the future. I thought I'd stick that one in there. Just because it's a fantastic valve cam and it's one that I haven't seen used before. But that brings us to the end of the roundup of NAL. And MVP of the day was Diaz with his 13-4 and performance playing for his new side of Oxygen. And now we'll have a quick look at the table and then I'll explain what's happening with Mirage as well. So as you can see, we have the table here. Ignore that Beast Coast result and Mirage at the bottom. What happened was Mirage were unable to field a side, um, which has then been dealt with with a statement. Um, but we'll just have a quick look at the rest of the table. Dark Zero um, at the bottom, not what I would expect to see. I thought that game was going to be a lot closer. But Sonics, with all those changes, looking pretty darn decent. And it's got me hugely excited for the play days um, coming up this Thursday and Friday, which I'll be watch partying as well. So here we have that statement from an um, NAL, well, Blast. And it's with Mirage unable to field and maintain an eligible roster. And in order to preserve um, the continuity words and stability of our league operations, we have made the decision to resolve, resolve blah, 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 revoke Mirage's license to complete compete in holy moly this is tough i might just let you read the rest of it but to sum it up basically mirage have been kicked out of nal and i think if you've learned anything about mirage um they fail to play their players they fail to pay staff and i think it is absolutely the correct decision taken from blast to boot those fucking cunts out of the league um, and that brings us up to the end of the roundup of nal and now we'll have a quick look at what happened 
over in Brazil. So BR play day one. The big changes over in BR were that W7M's undefeatable side, the dynasty, all those players have now moved over to the Furia roster. But the majority of the old lost team, which has now gone to NAL, making their way over to W7M. And I think pretty much all of these results sort of went the way you expected. With FaZe Clan, the SI finalists, beating the new look W7M side convincingly. Ninjas in Pajamas and Team Liquid, sort of the two teams that you feel might be battling it out for sort of third and fourth spot in the league, going quite deep with Nip coming out on top 7-5 against Liquid. Black Dragons, maybe the sort of underdogs in this league to nick a spot at the major, beating E1 7-3. Keed Stars smashing Fluxo Esports 7-2. And then that old W7M roster moving over to Furia, coming out on top 7-4 against MIBR. So no real huge upsets in the play day one of BR, but I tell you what, play day two got a hell of a lot spicier. So the big fixture to look at here is Furia, the old W7M team, going up against the new look W7M team. And well... I don't know what it is to do with W7M, but they just seem to win all the big things. But this new look W7M roster beating the old W7M roster 7-4. Um, and what's amazing about the BR League is that it's done on LAN as well. So I'll play you a little clip from that LAN event where it was being held and the reactions of that new W7M roster as they spanked out Furia 7-4. Matei, Bia, matei, matei. É isso, né? São cinco jogadores contra dois nesse momento. Kenzie e Filipox sofrem ainda para tentar buscar suas eliminações. Com 1 minuto e 20, a W7M consegue se manter na vantagem, mas Kenzie e Filipox não desistem nunca, retalha. 3x2 agora, boa recuperação. Vamos ver. Um minutinho para acabar o round. A gente tem ainda a Volpe sofrendo muito, tentando escapar, ele se protege. Filipox com pouca vida, mas ainda assim tá de DMR, né, Retalha? Tá de DMR, que causa estrago, dois tirinhos ali, derruba um jogador com a vida completa e o Volpe se tomar uma só já pode cair. Case abre por dentro do, do escritório, estrefa por ali, o Dots também, é o Volpe, levou mais um, derrubou o Case, é, é só o Pox agora. Terceira eliminação do Volps. 3x1. Filipox sozinho. Volps. 1-4-K. O monstro voltou mais forte do que no... I mean, just look at the passion from that new W7M side. You can see how much it means to them. And I think that truly has thrown the cat amongst the pigeons early in the VR league because I think a lot of people expected Fury and FaZe to run away with it. FaZe remain looking ever so impressive with a 7-4 victory to keep their 2-0 record. However, Fury suffer a defeat, Nip suffer a defeat, and Liquid suffer another defeat. So Liquid at 0-2, Nip 1-1. MIBR looked ever so impressive against Nip. And then Black Dragons, the underdogs, coming in clutch against Team Liquid impressively in beating them on border 7-3 and I have a little bit of a clip from that game that I was watch partying. Don't forget, I watch party pretty much the majority of these games. So get yourself over to Tom J Sherlock on Twitch if you want to come and join in the watch parties. But look at this clutch from Loria. Loira has a chance, has an opportunity to try oh and shut this oh. up. Oh my oh. oh almost gets it done. One HP in a dream. An M1911 in hand goes back to the tried and true. Has to hit the shots though. No way! No, Lyra. Lyra. Oh my god! That is outrageous. Who needed those rounds anyway? That is outrageous. Really to deliver. And boy, does he. That's one for the history. That is indeed one for the history books, as Stokes was saying there. Um, and yeah, I mean, not only was it a one versus two in the end post plant. He also ended up acing that round, which is just quite frankly, just outrageous. And, and one other little clip I wanted to show you was from that Fluxo FaZe Clan game. Fluxo looking to struggle a little bit in this league, but look at this insane 3k that Hashi got against FaZe. I mean, I'm just going to put it in there because it was quite simply fucking unreal. <laughs>
if it's clear. They still need to get into position. Cyber's rotated the main. I saw that, Andy. Andy, now, you've been busy all day, haven't you? you it's like... If Minikin gets to the post, oh! if he punishing... <laughs> Hashi! But Hashi instead believes in an One, eye for an two. eye because a post player <laughs> leads to a... So now we can take a quick look at that leaderboard. And, and I mean, yeah, just look at that. You've got... Fury mid table, W7M mid table, Nip and Liquid down towards the bottom, with Black Dragons, Vivo Keyed Stars, and FaZe being the only teams that have gone 100% undefeated in their first two play days. So, BR this year, who knows what's going to happen? I think that's the fantastic thing about R6 Esports, ladies and gents. I keep saying it, but what you have on paper, rip it up. Because as soon as that lobby goes live, anything can happen. And now we'll go on to our next league and take a quick look at what happened over there. So unfortunately, I could only find the results published on the Japanese Rainbow Six um, Twitter of Play Day 1, in which we saw Crest winning 8-6, Veet winning 7-5, and Exit beating Scars in a bit of a shock upset there, 7-3, and then Kag winning 7-2. I don't know. I, unfortunately, I don't have the results. I couldn't find a graphic for the results from Play Day 2 over in Japan. But looking at it, you've got Kag out on top playing 2, winning 2, and um, Exist playing 2, winning 2. Um, and then you've got sort of the other teams. I mean, you're looking at Crest, who have qualified in the past um, through the LCQ, and Scars, who made it to the main stage in Copenhagen, struggling a little bit with their first few games. So once again, I keep saying it, but who knows who's going to qualify for this Manchester Major. I'll try and get a little bit more research done for the Japan results for the next week's video. Um, but unfortunately, that's all I can bring to you. Um, and I know there's certain people out there like Whippet and Gibson Cars who will absolutely adore that CAG are on top of the table. Um, I'll show you a little picture. Actually, I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but they basically have a flag that they take to events that says CAG me daddy. <laughs> but now we'll move on to what happened over in Korea. So we have our results from play day one of Korea. And it's a new look talent who have joined with PSG. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Paris Saint-Germain, the football club, who came out 7-0 victors. A pretty insane result. And they continued that on the next day, but we won't look at that yet. Blossom, who I can't help but when I look at Blossom's logo, think like they're... The arch nemesis to Bliss because of the Bliss and the Blossom. I don't know why, that's just in my head. They win 7-2. D plus Kia get a big result up against Fear X. Don't forget, Fear X made it through into those after those group stages out of SI. So D plus Kia, a big result for them there. And then we had Weeb L beating MIR Gaming 8-6 as well. And we'll take a quick look at the results that happened on Play Day 2 as well. So play day two, it was much more of the same thing, with Talon looking ever impressive. That's two games played, and they've only dropped two rounds. Weeb L beating Fear X as well, so not the best start for Fear X. A team that probably came away from SI with quite high hopes, have played two and lost two now. Blossom continue their reign of dominance, winning two out of two games. D plus as well, winning two out of two. So you've got to say that Weeb L. Um, Blossom, Talon, and D plus Kia looking good as we take a quick look at the table. So as we look at the table here, you've got um, Weebel winning two games in overtime, D plus Blossom and PSG Talon coming out on top, winning both of their games in regulation. And I have to say, I'm very excited about this new look Talon side, and I will show you why now. So Talon have picked up the three times as their head coach. Yes, you heard me correctly. Fabian is working part-time over in um, Copenhagen on the desk for EUL, is also leading Talon to winning 14 rounds and only dropping two. Joining on that coaching staff and as a content creator is also Pengu. So a lot of exciting stuff happening over in the Korean League. And I mean, surely Fabian can't make it the four, ti four times in this come, well, it'd be next year in 2025's SI, surely not. And our final lead to take a look at is LATAM South and LATAM North. Don't forget that only one of these teams will be making it through to the Manchester Major. After these group stages, the groups will mix and the winner of both of those, well, whoever comes out on top in the playoffs 
from those top teams from Latam South and Latam North will be making it to the Manchester Major. Vasco, Maycam managed to get the regulation wins. Um, I think it's a little bit of a shock result there for Knights. I think a lot of people thought Knights might be a strong team going into this. But I would like to focus more on Latam North because I think that is probably where the best hope for Latam is coming from. You may call me a little bit biased because we know some of the boys playing out for Revan. Um, you've got a couple of EU lads in there um, playing over for Revan out in Mexico. Um, and Revan came out with a hugely, hugely impressive win. Winning 7-0 up against Six Karma. Six Karma, a lot of people would say, are probably one of the top teams in all of the Latam region. Let's not forget that they had Fools, who was previously playing for Secret in EUL, making his way back over to that side of the world, playing for Six Karma. And I'll play you a little clip from the coverage that just talks about the, that result. And listen to the reactions as Revan secure a 7-0 victory. I didn't actually get the opportunity to watch any of these games live because they happened in the middle of the night and I was an EP boy, but I watched it back and Revan managed to win six straight attacking rounds on the Cafe Dofieski, securing it with a 7-0 victory, putting them securely top of the table and have a little look at the reaction to them winning that 7-0 now. Creo que lo ve, creo que lo ve quick. Creo que lo viste, lo viste, lo viste y sí lo detiene, lo detiene tiempo. El equipo de Rebel le va a colocar un 7-0 y sí, un 7-0 Zapatero. Rebel no domina creo. al equipo de la Ola Verde. Tremendo enfrentamiento. 7-0, Ángel. 7-0. Que no se olvide, Palizón. Si había alguna duda... So that brings us to the end of the roundup of what happened in all of the Play Day 1s across the world. In next week's video, we'll obviously include the APAC region who start this week as well. Um, and as I said, I'm going to be watch partying as many games as I possibly can. So if you fancy coming in and watching the action live, make your way over to that Twitch channel. Um, but I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Um, and if you have any feedback or things you'd like to see included in future videos, please do let me know. But it's goodbye from me. And we're one step closer, well, one week closer to knowing who's going to be making it to the Manchester Major. Um, enjoy the siege because there's a fuck ton of it. And I'll see you soon, guys, on the stream or in the next YouTube video. Bye-bye.